Hello, beautiful people. This is Joseph from Humble You Media, and I wanted to talk about a few of Carl Jung's psychological perspectives on war, as the times are inching closer to another global crisis. This idea of war was truly inside of Jung from the start. You see, he had visions of World War I a year before they happened in 1913, and it was from these visions that really led him to complete his black books, his personal journals, to write the Red Book, and I believe truly birth his analytical psychology. It was in his unconscious where he had these visions where he saw there was an intelligence. There was a future view of what is to come, hidden deep in him, that there's something more than his eye, than his own consciousness. And he really developed that inner trust to dive into the unconscious. So war was there at the start for Jung. It's an archetype that runs its course throughout humanity. And I figure, I pull a few quotes out of his collected works and also in the Red Book to provide you some thoughts on what war means, what's underlying this archetype, what's pushing forward the outward evil. We'll begin in the collected works and his theory on the unconscious. It is the unconscious that provides that breeding ground, that energy that allows war to outwardly manifest. And while it's easy to get distracted by the devastation and all of human evil on full display outwardly, it's inwardly where Jung continues to point us. In his On the Psychology of the Unconscious, he writes to conclude the preface, This war has pitlessly revealed to civilized man that he is still a barbarian, and has at the same time shown what an iron scourge lies in store for him, if ever again he should be tempted to make his neighbor responsible for his own evil qualities. The psychology of the individual is reflected in the psychology of the nation. What the nation does is done also by each individual. And so long as the individual continues to do it, the nation will do likewise. Only a change in the attitude of the individual can ignite a change in the psychology of the nation. The great problems of humanity were never yet solved by general laws, but only through the regeneration of the attitudes of individuals. If ever there was a time when self-reflection was absolutely necessary, it is now, in our present catastrophic epoch. Yet, whoever reflects upon himself is bound to strike upon the frontiers of the unconscious, which contains what above all else he needs to know leading us all back to ourselves and not the self in us but rather the ego that's unable to bear the wholeness to bear the conflict in ourselves the ego that builds defenses and projects everything outwardly which causes war to occur it is this ego that needs to be able to handle the wholeness of the self the wholeness of the unconscious the wholeness of its own psyche that Jung is pointing us to And it's from this ego, individual by individual, that causes mass psychosis. When that ego is undeveloped, when it's either inflated or unconscious, when it thinks it's the owner of the house, or when it has no will. Either way, that ego causes tension with the unconscious. And that tension causes chaos. And then the chaos causes war. He wrote in a section titled, The Fight with the Shadow, in his paper, Civilization in Transition, that the worldwide confusion and disorder reflect a similar condition in the mind of the individual. But the lack of orientation is compensated in the unconscious by the archetypes of order. Here again, I must point out that if these symbols of order are not integrated into consciousness, the forces they express will accumulate to a dangerous degree just as the forces of destruction and disorder did 25 years ago. The integration of unconscious contents is an individual act of realization, of understanding, and moral evaluation. It is a most difficult task, demanding a high degree of ethical responsibility. Only relatively few individuals can be expected to be capable of such an achievement, and they are not the political, but the moral leaders of mankind. The maintenance and further development of civilization depends on such individuals. 
for it is obvious enough that consciousness of the masses has not advanced since the First World War. Only certain reflective minds have been enriched, and their moral and intellectual horizon has been considerably enlarged by the realization of the immense and overwhelming power of evil, and of the fact that mankind is capable of becoming merely its instrument. But the average man is still where he was at the end of the First World War. Therefore, it is only too obvious that the vast majority are incapable of integrating the forces of order. On the contrary, it is even probable that these forces will encroach upon consciousness and take it by surprise and violence against our will. We see the first symptoms everywhere, totalitarianism and state slavery. The value and importance of the individual are rapidly decreasing and the chances of his being heard will vanish more and more. This process of deterioration will be long and painful, but I fear it is inevitable. Yet in the long run, it will prove to be the only way by which man's lamentable unconsciousness, his childishness and individual weakness can be replaced by a future man who knows that he himself is the maker of his fate and that the state is his servant and not his master. You see, what's really important about this quote is the idea of the archetype of order. Jung says a lack of conscious orientation activates this archetype of order. And it's an archetype of order that'll push somebody to need that order in the world, to look for it in a political party, in an ism, is it in an identity, in all these different ideas and formulations and groups and this is and that. You see it throughout the entire world. And why I'm bringing that up is we could see this archetype active right now. Which then means there's a mass psychosis in our current times. Again, when consciousness is disoriented, when it's unordered, then the archetype of order takes shape within our unconscious. And then as many try to find that order that they're unconsciously being pushed toward, Then you see the little group show up in the world. Jung speaks about this archetype of order. He speaks about the force within this archetype of order and how it perforced the First World War. So he's seeing in this idea of mass psychosis, in this idea of consciousness needing order, Consciousness lost in its ego, in its subjective, in its eye sense. Disconnected from the unconscious, whether it's inflated, whether it's unconscious. This dynamic is allowing for that archetype of order to take shape. And that archetype of order, if it's not integrated, which we're again seeing it not being integrated into individuals, rather being integrated outwardly into all these little groups. He's saying that if this continues, those forces get dangerous. Now the interesting thing about this is the only way through is something like war. The only thing to wake people up is something like war. It's through war that'll humble somebody to use such a beautiful word, humble somebody if they're inflated, back to their unconscious, back to their self. Humble somebody if they're unconscious, if their ego's asleep, to wake up, to see itself. So while I'm not hoping for or against war, I think through this idea of the archetype of order, seeing it in the world today, and realizing what it can be, will really give us some new insights into the current picture today. Now, as we look at things objectively and see the world for what it is currently, Jung did the same process through his Red Book. It was in his Red Book where he was watching World War I take shape and he was living through the World War. And it was through those visions and through that experience where Jung had some rather positive or meaningful takes on how to view war, how to see it in a different light. How to understand why it is, what its purpose is, 
And how come it keeps showing up as this archetypal force throughout humanity? So with that, I'm going to pick up this red book and read a few quotes on what Jung said during the First World War. So in the chapter titled Resolution, he writes, If you do not succeed in producing the greatest evil out of this war, you will never learn the violent deed and learn to overcome fighting what lies outside of you. Therefore, it is good if you want this greatest evil with all of your heart. So what he's trying to do is get us okay with the evil in us. Not trying to see it in someone else, which builds that conflict. Rather trying to, again, lead us to bear ourselves. He also says a little bit later on in this chapter, May the frightfulness become so great that it can turn men's eyes inward. So that their will no longer seeks the self in others, but in themselves. And I truly think this is where Jung's going with this idea of war. He understands its cause. And he says the only way we can get through it, the only way we can get past it, is if we can bear ourselves. And with that, I want to finish with one more quote. This one in the Travis Stock Lectures. And I think it's an important quote to conclude. As he says, Before the Great War, all intelligent people said, We shall never have any more war. We are far too reasonable to let it happen. And our commerce and finance are so interlaced internationally that war is absolutely out of the question. And then we produce the most gorgeous war ever seen. And now they begin to talk that foolish kind of talk about reason and peace plans and the such. They blindfold themselves by clinging to a childish optimism. And now look at reality. Sure enough, the archetypal images decide the fate of man. Man's unconscious psychology decides, and not what we think and talk in the brain chamber up in the attic. I hope you see that there are forces in us that require us. We could play all the games we want and all the comforts outwardly, but it's never going to truly satisfy and fulfill us. The only way forward for humanity is a way of individuals gathering and bearing their self, the wholeness included. But that's a long road, and that's a road most would rather push aside and project outwardly. So for now, war is inevitable. It's chaotic, it's destructive, but it's also a way for some to wake up, for some to move forward, and for some to truly grow. And what I'll end with is this. The only true power, the only true strength the only true freedom there is in this world is within you. Not within a government. Not within a political party. Not within some identity. Some group. Some ism. It's here. So with that, much love and as always, stay humble.